Hello, viewers. I am Dr. Jung Yong-on, MC of this case discussion. We will discuss the optimal solution to some challenging or difficult cases. So we have invited three doctors. It has been two weeks since the last time. Hello. Today, we will look at some of the challenging cases sent by our viewers. So, we have chosen mandibular anterior GBR cases for the discussion. The first case, 53-year-old male, a bridge for number 33 to 43 is seriously mobile and the bone is quite seriously resorbed. This is the x-ray. How can we treat this case? What do you think? I have prepared a similar case. In this case, the periodontal mobility is quite serious. So already alveolar ridge has been destroyed quite a lot. How to establish the plan for the treatment is very important. Whether we'll go for the staged approach or simultaneous approach needs to be decided. And I believe uh, there will be different opinions among the viewers. I prefer to take a conventional approach. So, in this case that I brought with me is the same patient we discussed the last time. Number 47 is extracted and the GBR was done for the vertical augmentation. And the anterior region is not very good as well. So if you look at the lower anterior, overall, last time I talked about this. So in 2004, implants were placed and 47 GBR was done. The patient got lost for follow-up and uh, came back in five years. So like this, when he came back for low anterior, a 42 is already extracted and there were three anterior incisors remaining. Number 42 was lost because of the period disease, so the bone level is lower than the other teeth. As I said last time, I prefer to use autogenous bone. So here, autogenous bone is available. And I try to level the implant placement positions as much as possible. Some needs to be placed deeper. So I try to build the area so that implants can be placed on similar positions. In the basal of 42, uh, there's a lot of bone loss. The vertical bone height increasing GBR can be chosen, but at number 43, gingival recession is observed. Even though the bone height can be aligned with the GBR, it has higher pr probability of a recession later. So, uh, after that, the standard GBR is done and it's submerged. You can see the bone is formed. The bone surrounding the implants need to be maintained as much as possible. Thank you very much. Anyone else to add a comment? By looking at Dr. Young's case, I agree. If you look at the case sent by one of our viewers, um, I brought a similar case of mine from number 32 especially to 43. Perio disease is quite serious with serious mobility in the lower arch. As Dr. Yang showed the case, 
when there is a um, periodontal disease going on quite seriously, we need to determine whether we will go for the immediate placement or delayed placement. For immediate placement, uh, we need to determine where, whether we will go for immediate loading or not. Or if it is not feasible, we need to consider GBR. Various conditions need to be considered. I tend to be conventional, so where there is a serious uh, periodontal disease, I, I extract the tooth. That means uh, there's a lot of bacteria and soft tissue is not very good. So uh, we wait two to three months, then infection would be subsided and the soft tissue would be healed. So this is a similar case. Teeth are extracted first, and to facilitate uh, the healing of soft tissue, collagen is added, and it is sutured. After about three months, soft tissue is being healed, and implants are placed together with bone graft. After about three months, if you dissect the soft tissue, the bone is not completely formed. Partially, the bone is formed. Still, you can place the implants there. After placing the implants, additional bone graft is made, especially in the lower anterior for the four interiors. GBR is difficult, especially at number 3 or 4. The bone width is maintained in many cases. Then, diameter 3.0, 3.3, or even 4.0 implants can be placed with the GBR. In this case, implants were placed. Dehiscence defect was not big, so bone graft was done. Resolvable membrane was used and sutured, stitched out in two weeks. After that, prosthesis was delivered. So this is a similar case to the case under discussion. A case sent by one of the viewers looking at the panorama and intraoral picture. I would discuss it with the patient and prepare a flipper or a temporary in advance. And um, to prepare for immediate loading not feasible, those things need to be prepared in advance. Possibility of delayed placement or immediate placement should be prepared as well, especially for number three and four. I believe uh, the situation is favorable for implant placement. Dr. Son, do you have anything to add? I believe mandible anterior region is a harsh environment to place implants and maintain the implants. It is also the area where bone is least available in the oral cavity. I usually, basically I agree with you, but my approach is one stage approach. Let me show you my case. Four anterior incisors were quite mobile, so during splinting the temporary, we decided to extract. The plan was the plan was to extract and immediately place implants at number 32 and 42, and then GPR, and to deliver the provisional immediately. As you can see, the bone is not really available buccolingually in the lower anterior, so there is a very little tolerance for errors. So most importantly, minimizing the error in choosing the treatment modality is very important. So on CT, at number 32 and 42, uh, there's a, some bone is available. At one or two, MS implants can be used. But here, two-piece, personally, I prefer to use a two-piece. 
So, so the plan was one MS kit will be used to place two 3.02 two piece implants. That was the plan. So, using the guide surgery, implant uh, positioning can be made very precise, leading to increase the success rate. In the past, uh, we would do the staged approach, delayed approach, and um, the submerged case can turn into one stage surgery. So implants were placed first. When I treat um, a lower anterior region, the residual bone you see here, we cannot expect the bone to remain like that after loading. CT is checked whether the implants are positioned precisely. Personally, for interior regions, when I do bone augmentation, I use xenograft, which is slow to be resorbed during GBR, even though the implants are in the bone housing that is necessary. So this is a one-stage approach. In about a week's time, provisional restoration is delivered. The augmented volume in the picture and on the CT are quite different. Actually, a lot of volume was augmented, but it's not really the case. Three weeks, 12 weeks after, and prosthesis delivered. If you look at the CT, the buckle bone is pretty well augmented. So what I emphasize is that uh, in the lower anterior and in implant sites, buckle bone is very important according to many papers. So I believe that is true. So 17 months, it is maintained pretty well. So if you take this protocol, a more stable treatment can be delivered, guided surgery or other surgical tools can be utilized to avoid submerged approach, and uh, we can do the one-stage surgery. Dr. Son, one MS guide is used to place lower anterior, and the flap is raised to do GBR. That is right. I'm kind of a stupid and I. <laughs> so uh, I try to make a lot of bone at first. So this is my normal protocol. So in the anterior region, I tend to do bone augmentation. That's what I prefer. So thank you very much for discussing case one. Let's go to the second case. 63-year-old male. This is a single case in the lower anterior. The bone is very thin. What do you do to place an implant? Do you do GBR first before placing implants or the other way around? That is the question. And if you look at the panorama x-ray, it looks like number 32 is extracted and uh, there's a splint onto both adjacent teeth. Looks like a temporary teeth. On the CT, the bone width is very narrow. So, what do you think about this case? Single case in the lower anterior is not a simple treatment. To place an implant, the bone width is very narrow. Here, it is not measured, but it's hardly two or three millimeters to place an implant, and there's a concavity which is observed in the lower anterior region. Very challenging case clinically. If it were me, I would prefer to use a bridge instead of an implant. If you insist on placing an implant, in such a narrow ridge, I had a similar case. Compared to the previous patient, the area is wide. It looks wider. The opposite side, 42, 
but if you open it, it looks narrower than expected. So dehiscence defect is bound to happen. So as I see it, the most difficult part in lower anterior is accurate positioning. Otherwise, it is hard to secure embracer space, especially for single case. If it is a bridge, we can create space that can be used, but it is very difficult for single case. In our hospital, we use surgical stent to have accurate positioning. Without a surgical stent, you need to rely on your clinical experience and you will have more regrettable outcome than satisfying outcome. As was discussed in other cases, one guide and tool can be used and surgical stent can be used as well. Accurate positioning is the most important thing. As you can see here, you can see I didn't exactly follow the fabricated guide. There's a difference between the two because the surgical stent is accurate in terms of the prosthesis, but if you follow that direction, you will get too close to the root of 41. Occlusal direction is respected, but below, I modify the direction a little bit in autogenous bone and the xenograft is used for the bone graft. It is placed in the desired place and prosthesis is delivered, as I said before. The direction might be correct, but embracer space needs to be created that is important in the lower anterior region. The soft tissue itself cannot fill up the embracer. The position of the prosthesis, the contour should be a little bit thinner. And I believe there are some reasons to make it that way. So in the mandible anterior region is not an easy case to maintain that for a long time. The soft tissue contouring, fitting the situation is very important. Is the diameter 3.0? Yes. Dr. Yang is a master when it comes to GBR. If you look at the Dr. Yang's case, especially for four incisors, 3.0 cannot be placed often. It was possible because it was number two. For number one, 3.0 placement is really hard. 3.0 implant is place the cervical area of prosthesis could not be made narrower so the shape is something we don't really want i prefer ms implants for the four anteriors in the mandible so i have prepared a case similar to the case under discussion mandible anterior is challenging if there is bone volume is enough, it's good, but there are many cases where knife edge ridges are found, so accurate drilling is required. So Dr. Yang uses a surgical guide or stent, and uh, Dr. Son uses guided surgery. And the surgical stent employs top-down approach, so at times you cannot follow the stent because the reach is too narrow. So eventually you need to open and um, you need to place the implant uh, looking at the bone and uh, do the prosthesis. We also, so we need to keep in mind the bone is very narrow when it comes to the lower anterior and the position should be very accurate. I do the guided surgery, but if I don't use it, periosteum needs to be sufficiently dissected. If necessary, even the 
link one side and we need to check the bone width to place an implant to place implants in the anterior areas in the mandible sublingual artery and the submental artery are running in the lingual side if you do the drilling improperly in the lingual side the implants will be positioned in an unwanted direction Emergency can occur because of bleeding like this. So placing implants in the anterior of mandible, we need to be careful not to penetrate into the cortical bone. That's very important. My case is very similar to the case under discussion. Number 32 is missing here on the CT. The neck is very narrow. Implant cannot be placed in a normal way. There's a no cancellous bone there. Uh, this is a young female who doesn't want a bridge, so implant placement is decided. In this case, two stage is used after GBR. Implant can be placed. Sometimes when the bone is very narrow and mesodistal also very narrow, how can we do the GBR? That's a very challenging situation. I make the incision and the sufficient soft tissue dissection is made. The cortical bone is sufficient, so if possible, it is perforated. Bone graft is done. Non-resorbable membrane is usually used here. Uh, today, resorbable membrane that doesn't resorb quite quickly is used as well. GBR is done and it is sutured. If necessary, the non-resorbable membrane can be fixed with pins. In two weeks, it's stitched out. The non-resorbable membrane is exposed a little bit, but it's no problem as there is no infection. After five months, the bone has space to place MS implants. The diameter range is from 2.0 to 3.0. I usually use 2.5 and 3.0 diameter MS implants. After the GBR, the CT, MS implant is placed. So, MS implant can be accurately placed and the prosthesis was delivered appropriately. So, if you look at the case under discussion sent by a viewer, on the CT, the bone width is just 2 millimeters, 2.0 MS implant cannot be placed here. A bridge can be delivered, but if the patient insists on getting an implant, you can use my protocol, doing GBR first, and the lower jaw has a cortical bone. A thick bone, so we could wait for two to five months before placing an implant. That would be an ideal approach. Thank you very much. I have an experience in placing MS implant. There is a bone width to place the implant, but the angulation was not quite right. One of the disadvantages of using MS implant is that you cannot adjust the angulation. So, in serious cases, when the angulation is off after placing the implant, I grind off the top portion with a burr. Dr. Yang, what, what do you think about MS? I don't really have a lot of MS cases in the lower anterior region. The smaller implants like MS compared to normal implants would have more advantages. I also try to figure this out. 
MS implant compared to the two-piece implants is very difficult to place. The biggest reason for that is it is very difficult to adjust the position for the proper prosthesis. In all cases, I use a surgical stent more so for mandible. Even though you have a lot of clinical implant placement experiences, as even Homer sometimes knows, as the expression goes, we need to have some reference to work on to reduce later headaches. As you said before, when I use MS cases, mostly for number one missing cases, to be honest, a bridge would be better because it's very difficult to place the implant and to do it properly, it requires a lot of concentration. I talk about this with other doctors and in terms of the structure, provisional restoration tend to be mounted immediately and immediate loading is applied, so we are afraid of that and uh, unexpectedly we can encounter failure cases of MS according to other doctors and I also have failure cases. So when I choose MS rather than the diameter fitting the bone volume I tend to choose a smaller one. One of the advantages of MS is that it is an implant of grade 5, very strong, 3.0 diameter implant, so a stem to diameter 3.0, right? For anterior in the mandible, it is very strong, so no problem, but I've used the 3.0 diameter implants from other companies. After two or three years, three cases fa failed because of tearing, so they were explanted and replaced with MS implants. MS implants is very advantageous over the two-piece implants in terms of the strength, but if you are skilled at using it, I sometimes use 2.0 implants out of occlusion in the long run compared to the thick implants, the cervical area shape can be better. That's the advantage. In this patient, it's a very sharp knife edge. 2.0 wouldn't work either. So GBR is required before placing MS implants or 3.0 two-piece implants. That's my view. Thank you very much. Dr. Jung talked about MS implants. Dr. Son, do you have anything to add? I prefer to use two-piece implants. I also use MS implants. To be honest, if you just concentrate on that case, my first recommendation is a bridge. <laughs> this is a little bit different from Dr. Jung's GBR case, and the defect is a non-contained defect. So I guess the GBR's result is questionable. I'm sure Dr. Yang would have excellent outcome. If you insist on doing the implant placement, I believe a guided surgery should be done. Accurate positioning and angulation of the implant is very implant, and a very good outcome of GBR should be achieved for the success. It is a very challenging case. I'm sorry, but that's all I can say here. 
whatever the implants may be, there are indications. If you use them according to the indications, you will have a good results. MS, one body, uh, can be a good implant according to the indications and two pieces as well. But in this case, one body implant needs to be used. Thank you. So we talked about uh, GBR case in the mandible anterior region. Thank you very much for raising the issues and questions to us. And thank you, doctors. I am Dr. Jung Young An, and uh, I'll see you again next time. Thank you. Uh, <laughs>